Thank you, Representative Clay. Uh, thank you for your leadership in convening this hearing. Uh, I would like to discuss state and federal restrictions to abortion access and the disproportionate impact that they have on LGBTQ plus patients. Dr. McNicholas, a few questions for you. Uh, first, could you brief, be, briefly describe the need for abortion care among the LGBTQ plus community? Absolutely, thank you for your question. I think the first most basic thing that most people forget is that your sexual orientation does not define who you are having sex with. Um, and so people in all of those communities may experience pregnancy. Uh, similarly, um, and I've had the honor of taking care of many trans and non-binary folks in my um, career, um, so long as you have a uterus, you have the capability of getting pregnant. Um, and if you think that accessing abortion care is stigmatizing when you present as a woman, imagine what it is when you're presenting as your authentic male self. I appreciate your mentioning that there are transgender men and non-binary individuals who rely on reproductive health services and abortion services. Uh, in 2015, when the National Center for Trans Equality surveyed transgender Americans, 23% of rep respondents didn't see a doctor when they needed to because of, quote, fear of being mistreated as a transgender person. As a doctor, can you describe some of the challenges gender diverse patients face in ac accessing health care and abortion care specifically? So in my practice, I have, again, had the great honor of taking care of many, specifically trans men seeking uh, hysterectomies uh, in their transformation process. And one of the things I hear from them unequivocally, each one of them, is that there have been tremendous delays in accessing very basic care. One, because they're afraid um, that they won't be treated with dignity and respect. And the second is because that is their lived experience. They have been turned down by many patients, have, excuse me, physicians, um, and have been intentionally degraded with, for example, use of intentional misgendering of, of the patient um, in front of them. And can you also describe some of the specific challenges that gay, lesbian, and bisexual patients may face in abortion care specifically? Sure. So I think it's important to remember that gay and lesbian folks um, also want to build families. They are parents. I myself have a wife and a child. Um, so I fit into that group as well. Um, it is important that they're able to access that care in a place where they feel respected and dignified, um, and Planned Parenthood is happy to be one of those places. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to those issues. Uh, turning to you, uh, Ms. Howell, uh, transgender people are four times more likely than the general population to live below the poverty line, and close to one in four lesbian bisexual women in the United States live in poverty. Yet current laws prevent federal Medicaid dollars from being used to cover abortion services. How do these funding restrictions overlap with identity to make abortion even less accessible, accessible for the LGBTQ plus communities? The discrimination that um, people go, on, go toward and because they are either trans or gender non-binary um, or LGBTQ, it really does hit them harder because as was already mentioned, they are afraid to go and get services. And when they go to get services, they find that some of the current regulations allow people to discriminate against them. Um, and that they then find that they don't have any access to getting good reproductive health services, much less regular health care services. Our organization does believe that all people have the right to get reproductive health services, regardless of whether they identify as LGBTQ, whether they are trans, um, whether they are low income. All of these factors should be taken into account to allow them to get the kind of services that they deserve. And so laws or regulations that allow, that have been done by this government, that allows uh, other people to discriminate against them, puts them at higher risk. And, um, and those are the kind of laws and regulations that we fight against. Well, thank you, Ms. Howell. Thank you, Dr. McNicholas, for your advocacy for some of the most vulnerable populations. And I 
believe we need to really consider their access to health care uh, as we craft these laws. I yield back my time.